Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Lee, as you know, uh, last week he sent me a, a Tudor Black Bay GMT. This week he has sent me uh, a second generation 42 millimeter Omega Planet Ocean. And what did Phil say, the military writer, defense writer? I think he uh, is from the Navy. I think he was poking fun of me. He saw this. And he goes, oh yeah, McMahon, you're going to need that helium valve and you're coming up from the seabed after working on the rock piles. And uh, oh yeah, I definitely need that helium valve. <laughs> Beautiful watch. Uh, I've been wearing it uh, pretty much nonstop since I got it. All right, let's get some focus on there. Ah, too much light right there. Okay, there we go. There we go. Keep it out of the light there. I apologize. I see some light issues. Okay, beautiful. So, uh, Lee, what Lee did was he sold uh, all of his mid-tiers and entries, pretty much Seiko's. And he now has, I think, uh, three Omegas and a Tudor. And uh, he said a lot of people don't like the thick case, but uh, I like it a lot. And uh, I, I don't know, I, I'm wearing this and I'm thinking, you're the boss <laughs> when you wear the, uh, the Omega. And uh, you're the boss when you wear the Tudor. The Tudor's actually louder. Let's get some focus on that bad boy. The Tudor's actually louder. There we go. And uh, is a little bit bigger. But uh, so the second generation Planet Ocean, he put a, a current generation bracelet on it. I could adjust it. In fact, it was a little tight, so I uh, just pressed a button at the clasp, and I, I made it bigger. It was beautiful. And so uh, this, uh, this Omega is 42. I, I looked it up on Amazon, the current generation 43.5, but I couldn't believe it. The blue, the blue was 4700 bucks. I mean, hey, if you're looking... <laughs> To spend um, 36 on a brand new Tudor Black Bay 41, what's stopping you from spending 47 <laughs> on a uh, on an Omega? Well, we'll talk about this in a second. Let's just put the Omega all by itself for now. So uh, this uh, Planet Ocean, as soon as I saw it, I said to myself, much less busy than the uh, the Tudor. And uh, I wanted to give you some uh, some comparisons that I that I made in my head as I was wearing the uh, the Omega and the uh, and the Tudor. I was wearing them and I was saying, what, you know, what what kind of comparisons could be could we make here? Come on, you stay there, son. Good job, good job, son. So I wanted to talk about wrist presence and what I would call command attention. And for that, I'm going to give it to the the uh, the Tudor. It plays huge. It's just it's the biggest 41 millimeter watch I've ever seen. It plays like a 45. Uh, so uh, if I if uh, if you were choosing just for pure command presence, if you like attention in a room, pure wrist presence, I would go with the Tudor. Funny enough. Lee describes his, his Planet Ocean as vanilla ice cream. And he says, a lot of people don't like vanilla ice cream, but I like vanilla. And I see his point, that there's something about the, uh, the vanilla uh, aspect in that. Let me see if I can, uh, well, let me see what happens if I, if I do that. Well, still wants to do that. Okay, so, uh, all right, there we go. Ah, that, that dial shining. Shiny little thing. Okay, so uh, for luxury feel, that's the Omega. It, it's subtle, but I'm telling you, you're going to feel more luxury uh, on your wrist with the Omega. It, I mean, it is a much more luxurious watch. I mean, it's got a ceramic uh, insert. And, uh, oh, by the way, when I was wearing the Planet Ocean, because a lot of you guys look at the Omega Seamaster, you know what? I like this more. I, the wave dial on the Seamaster is interesting. It's cool. But for the long haul, I want the, the uh, non-wave dial. And I never liked the, uh, the current generation uh, Seamaster uh, bracelets. 
I like the uh, the Planet Ocean bracelet. The uh, the uh, what do you call it? Like an oyster situation. You don't like uh, focus in there, son. Let's look at that dial. Beautiful dial. So uh, for for luxury feel, I'm going to. Uh, the Omega. For wrist comfort, this surprised me. The Tudor sits on my wrist better. For wrist comfort, I'm giving it to the Tudor. I'm not saying that the comfort was bad on the um, on the uh, on the Omega. It was fine. It felt good. But I have to confess, when I put the Tudor on afterward, the Tudor sits on my wrist better. By the way, one thing that surprised the heck out of me when I got the Omega Planet Ocean last night, I swear to God, it's did Seiko just pretty much take the case design and copy it? Because I swear to God, the case, this Seiko is a mid-tier Planet Ocean. And interestingly, when I got the Planet Ocean, it, it increased my esteem for my uh, Seiko current generation uh, MM200. This is the SBDC125. This, I mean, this is not gonna compare with a $5,000 watch, because this is a $1,200 watch, but for a mid-tier, I really love it. Having these um, luxury watches, you know, the Tudor and the Omega, they've made me look at Seiko differently. They've made me see them for the mid-tier watches that they are but they've also made me appreciate them more. Very, I've never, I never anticipated that that would happen. But man, I swear to God, this Seiko is essentially a, a 42 Planet Ocean. And it's, I mean, for 1200 bucks, <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, okay, so back to the uh, Tudor comparison. For um, being impervious to scratching and smudging, uh, Easily the Omega. Ladies and gentlemen, this Omega is eight years old. There's no scratches on it. Lee bought it used. The, um, the Tudor, that side polish hunk of case there, it gets smudges on it easily. Now this one's not scratched, but uh, I'm gonna, if you're looking for long-term impervious to scratch situation, I'm gonna go to, um, I'm gonna go with the, uh, the Omega. So, in a way, the Omega and the Tudor are apples and oranges because the, the Omega is more unified, more, more minimalistic in design, whereas the Tudor is just busier. I mean, you've got the snowflake hands, and of course this one's even going to be busier because it's a GMT with, uh, with different uh, colored uh, bezels, so you're going to have that at issue. Personal preference. Honestly, I'm torn. I mean, my sophisticated side likes the more simple, less busy Planet Ocean. And I like the balance of uh, boldness and elegance. But my lizard brain gravitates toward the more loud wrist presence, more commanding wrist presence of the Tudor Black Bay. Uh, but I mean, geez, I mean, I'm going to give the slight nod to the Omega because it hasn't gotten scratch in eight years. That's a big selling point to me. Even though the Tudor sits more comfortably on my wrist and even though the Tudor is more affordable, I'm thinking, hey man, if you're spending 3600 on a brand new watch, what's stopping you from spending 4700 <laughs> on a uh, on a watch? I mean, you're talking to a guy who spends about 6000 a year on mid-tier, so you, I mean, you may not see me for a year. I just won't buy a watch for you a year, and if I still want one of these, then I guess I would have to get it. Uh, now, look, something else happened to my surprise as I was uh, looking at these watches. I, I don't know why. I put on my Willard, and I... I had this elevated appreciation for my Captain Willard. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. I mean, the comfort of it, the the uh, the character of it, um, the bang for, for your buck of it, the 70-hour power reserve of it. I put it on after wearing the uh, the Omega and the Tudor, and I wasn't saying to myself that this was a substitute for it, but for some reason. I um, I developed a, a fondness for it that I had never had before, and then I had this very melancholy thought that I only had two watches, 
the uh, the Willard and the Planet Ocean. I don't, it was melancholy, a sort 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 of uh, a sort of longing for a simple life. I always felt deep down in my heart that I would be happier with a smaller collection. And if, if I were to sell all my watches to fund a Planet Ocean and just keep my Willard, I guess I mean, would I be leaving the addiction cycle? Would I? Would my wife and I just sell our house in Torrance for two million and move to Maui? And I would brag to you guys, you know, once every four months about, oh yeah, man, just rocking my Willard and my Planet Ocean here by Poolside in Maui. And then uh, let's see, Bruce from the Bruce Williams Channel and Rob from the Random Rob Channel would come over to Maui and they they would do a surveillance with military binoculars before they visited me. They'd see me at the pool with a coral blue uh, sapphire monster, which doesn't even exist right now. And they would go, ah, he's hiding his addictive ways from us. Let's do a surprise visit now. Yes, I. That would be something else, but no, uh, just joking there, obviously, but the, uh, man, I don't know why I got this melancholy longing when I saw the Planet Ocean just to have two watches. So uh, I'll continue uh, comparing uh, the Tudor and the, uh, the Planet Ocean, and uh, I'll see which one uh, gravitates toward my lizard brain the most. I don't know, but... Uh, they're both nice, man. I, I, I could recommend both of them. All right, Lee, thank you so much, man, for ruining my life. Always appreciated. Until next time, I'm out.